So I was, I was um, working through your uh, burn fat, not sugar Facebook page, and you were the, definitely the low-carb, high-fat guy. And it was definitely a emphasis on high-fat back when keto was, you know, just a baby five, six years ago, and we're all going, this keto thing's amazing. And if we just, you know, eat less carbs and, and we've got less insulin, then we'll all disappear into nothing, into a puddle and lose weight and be shredded. And I suppose um, then there was this um, that I found on, on, on your site that uh, you may or may not recognise depending on your memory, but um, uh, Ivor Cummings back in the day shared my little initial thesis on nutrition and I, I was trying to calculate the insulin load and insulogenic calories of my wife's diet to try and stabilize blood sugars and insulin which was really cool for her and worked really amazingly and um, we, we developed uh, you know these are the most insulogenic foods and these are the the greatest foods for uh, for keeping your insulin low and you even generously before I met Alex developed a little calculator um, yep. to calculate the insulogenic calories. So that was, that was way cool. I was thrilled back then. Um, but I suppose we learned that there's limitations and not everybody who drank more olive oil disappeared into nothing, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, that, 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 that was cool. And this is something that, that our friend Mike Julian shared with us, um, I remember, way back in the day, and, and it's sort of a bit of a aha moment that insulin really holds back the flow of stored energy from your body into your bloodstream and the insulin is like a break on your system so i thought that was that was really cool so um yeah what, what do you I'll, I'll shut up and let you comment and um yeah yeah oh first of all i well, i still love this guy and his hyperlipid blog and i also still can't pronounce his actual <laughs> he's just peter of hyperlipid to me because like literally i've never heard anyone say his last name but you know this is uh peter of hyperlipid the uh, retired veterinary anesthetist from the uk i think and he's like a super cool guy but i i did go through Back in the day, I went through this just uh, super, super low carb, super high fat phase where like I listened to like I was a uh, Ron Rosedale fan way, way, mm. way back in the day. Like I, I've I met Dr. Rosedale and uh, he used to live not too far from me. And I have like a signed copy of his book. And and I, I was such a fan and, and I would listen to him, you know, say things like, your entire lifespan and health span can just be summed up as like how much glucose you burned versus how much fat you burned in your whole life. Like that's it. And mm. I, and I, I actually, you know, for a minute there, I really did get sucked into the, if low carb is good, even lower carb is better. And then the ultimate is just 100% pure fat. And I was all in on the insulin uh, hypothesis and the, uh, fat is a free food, and I, you mm. know, for a, for a hot five minutes there, I was just as bad as anyone, at, like or worse, or way worse, and uh, and I totally um, recognized that and and realized that. But at the time, I just uh, kind of went along with this whole like keto movement that uh, was pretty popular right mm, then. Yeah, you know? I was drinking bulletproof coffee and. Oh, we all were, man. It was like butter and Yeah, and I looked in the mirror and then I was like, oh geez, that's uh not quite working for me as well as mm -hmm. I hope. So um th this is a this is a meme that you shared that I think helped me understand what insulin does. And that you know, insulin, like I said before, is that break on the liver that holds back your fat in storage. So people that are more obese are secreting more insulin. Um and then you know, similarly fasting insulin, which is what the, you know, your insulin that holds back overnight, um, your fat in storage is related to how obese you are. And, you know, when you look at type one, people with type one diabetes, um, I, I don't think most people who are, don't have a, a pet type one diabetic to, to play with and watch all their insulin glucose movements understand that, you know, the, majority of your insulin for money 80 percent of her insulin daily dose is just required to stop her body disintegrating it's just those little bumps um, when she eats that 
you know, a raise. And we we see the, the glucose excursion and the insulin excursion after carbs and say carbs are really bad, but it's, uh, you know, that insulin that holds your body fat in storage that you've really got to attack. So that was a really big aha moment for me. I don't know whether you want to unpack that and explain that a bit more. Uh, for me. Sure, yeah. So uh, a few years ago, uh, about five years ago, I just started researching anything I could find on insulin because I knew that hyperinsulinemia was bad. Mm. So I just did this first order approximation where since high insulin's bad, anything that raises insulin is bad, uh, aka carbs are bad. And that's just as far as I went with it. It was like just a you know, five-year-old mentality where high insulin's bad, anything that raises insulin is bad, carbs are really, really bad. But then after researching insulin, I realized that the, the purpose of insulin is anti-catabolism. Insulin's role is to keep everything in storage instead of flooding back out into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And anyone who's got had the privilege of working with a type 1 diabetic or mm -hmm. being type 1 diabetic or having exposure to type 1 diabetes starts to get that. As soon as mm -hmm. you have this insulin deficiency, every stored fuel in your bloodstream, I mean, in your body just streams out into your mm -hmm. bloodstream. You have just this uncontrolled lipolysis where all of your glucose comes out of glycogen storage into the bloodstream. All of your fat comes out of your fat cells into the bloodstream. All, your, your whole body just gets melted down into energy and it floods your bloodstream. What and insulin is go through the roof and, you know, which is what we think we want. But right. Every fuel just goes crazy. And then you're just peeing out sugar and you just your whole body melts down into a skeleton. And what insulin's doing is holding everything in. It's mm. anti catabolic. And it's doing that by sensing fuels in your bloodstream and if fuels are entering your bloodstream, it's going up to hold everything in mm. your circulation. That's how it keeps uh, fat from streaming out of all your fat cells. That's how it keeps all your proteins from breaking down. That's how mm. it keeps all of your glycogen from flooding into your system. Insulin is like this wall that's holding everything in storage. And as soon as you're insulin deficient, mm. it all just comes flooding in, out into your circulation. Now, when you eat something and there's more fuels in your bloodstream, Insulin doesn't really necessarily know where that came from. It just knows there's fuels in your bloodstream. So it's got to do its thing and it just immediately halts lipolysis. Mm -hmm. And that's what insulin's primary role is. And once you realize that it's anti-catabolic, mm. you kind of get this whole different yeah. feel for insulin. And then once you, re once you understand the uh, personal fat threshold and the fact that you don't have a good place to store things, then you start to realize why insulin's high all the time and over fat people and why it's so bad. And uh, you get to sort of disentangle chronically high insulin from no, mm -hmm. from a lack of storage from acute insulin you get if you just ate some carbs. And yeah, there are two a massive totally aha different things. For me, mm -hmm. what I understood that. And, and just that, you know, when you eat carbs, your body says, hey, I don't have anywhere to store that glucose. Let's raise insulin to shut down the release of lipolysis so we can clear the carbohydrates quickly. Protein's mm -hmm. a little bit slower and fat. The body says, yeah, I, I can store that. Let's not really shut down lipolysis as much and it happens over a longer time but over the fullness of time everything raises insulin and, and the way to attack that is to you know find a way to eat less in a sustainable manner exactly exactly and it's all about uh, your pancreas is really just a fuel sensor a fuel pressure sensor and if mm. fuels are low glucagon goes up to raise fuels in the bloodstream lipolysis glycogenolysis breakdown of whatever to make energy but if uh, fuels are too high, then insulin's there halting mm. uh, the release of any stored fuels so you can clear out what's already in the bloodstream. Mm. Yeah, and so um, I think when you had that realization, you came out with this that uh, triggered the low-carb community a fair bit and people went, wait up, I need more fat. I, I, can't, I can't, you know, I need the fat. But, you know, we all, I think, eventually have... A lot of us have been on a journey of, of unlearning and, and relearning. So um, 